Hey everyone, this is Sacred Force and here we have our starter combat guide for Rise of the Ronin. A thanks to PlayStation for providing a free copy. In this video, we are going to learn the best way to start playing the game by understanding the core aspect of the gameplay. Of course, we'll be focusing on features that are related to combat, such as combat style, counter spark, character swap, weapon switch, and blade flash. We will be covering these features because from what I've experienced so far, they are valuable mechanics that we will find in our gameplay experience as we progress through the game. There are many things to learn from these features and uh, getting familiar with them will be important to understand how the gameplay actually works, especially how a combat style counters each other and how to get advantage against your opponent. Once we know how the system works, we can fully optimize our playstyle and overcome any challenge by implementing everything that can potentially improve our experience with the game mechanics. As we progress through the game, there are going to be many combat styles to discover, from NPCs to enemies, and each combat style usually has their own martial skill and moveset to try them out. Among many combat styles, there are three style types that will work as a counter to each other. Chi, Jin, and Ten. It's like a rock paper scissors formula, we choose the correct combat style to counter the opposite while avoiding our counterpart. Bear in mind that the star types is what affects the compatibility and not the weapon we equip it. Like it is possible to use the katana against an undachi user as long as we use the right combat style to counter his weapons. These are not the star types that doesn't take part of the formula called shinobi type. It puts you at disadvantage against all startups, no matter what situation you're in. But a successful counter will always be considered an advantage. More into that shortly. The way how the gameplay works will always make us proactively manage our style during combat. Whenever we find an enemy, it is important to look at the sign next to the half bar if our combat styles are effective against them. Now, for this segment, we want to know how much this system affects our performance in combat like gaining extra damage for using the right combat styles or doing a proper counter to reap numerous benefits. After testing several mechanics, I can confirm that the counter spark is what really matters the most when it comes to countering other combat styles in a rock, paper, scissors formula. When we perform a counter spark against an enemy, we will see a red bar highlights at the half bar. When that happens, the enemy will be in panic for a brief moment depending which startups we have countered with. And they will receive extra key damage and max key damage during that period. From a player's standpoint, being at the disadvantage will prevent the enemy from panicking upon a successful counter spark, which means they will be able to retaliate afterward. Having this penalty is why swapping styles will become important to avoid being at disadvantage. Of course, being in neutral will last 4 seconds for the enemy to remain in panic, while being in advantage will be 8 seconds. A successful counter spark at the right style allows more aggressive play for a brief moment, enabling a few combo potential against an enemy. As soon as we start hitting the enemy, while the half bar is highlighted, they will recover sooner from your combo and begin to defend themselves. Before that happens, we can use some martial skill that can cause a stagger, such as knockdown. Just remember that it is only possible to apply any staggers when they are in panic mode, and not while they are attacking. Harper armor will be activated during the combo. Other things that matter is the amount of damage gained or damage received, depending on the style types we are currently in. For this example, I tested with Gonzo to see the damage number received, and the neutral will serve as a baseline to compare numbers. If we are in disadvantage, we receive around 3% more damage. Being at the advantage, however, will reduce the damage by 3%. I was not able to test our own damage because of the passive that I've already unlocked from each weapon proficiency. I only had Jin and 10 star types with increased damage and key damage, and nothing for chi damage. So I had to skip this test to avoid any miscalculation. The damage we saw so far were also not consistent or fixed over the course of our testing, and it was always showing different results. After receiving the same attacks from Gonzo, 
I can only but estimate the amount of damage received and it summers all numbers into one to condense the result. So it is around 3% in most cases whenever we are at advantage or disadvantage. There is also key damage in place when receiving damage, but the difference is barely noticeable. Maybe a build will really affect how this whole formula works, but as it stands right now we should be fine disregarding the penalty. There are more benefits to mix between different attacks from different combat styles if we want to optimize our playstyle. So it is possible to switch styles whenever we want to and be creative with the combo as long as we counter spot with the right style to pressure your enemy. Speaking of counter spot, this mechanic is one of our main defense against enemy attack in Rise of the Ronin. While this mechanic comes some key, we regain our key back upon successfully parrying the attack. After that, we can follow up with another kind of spot. To block more attack, dodge away or use martial skill. The cool part is that counter spark can also be served as an attack. Despite being dedicated to the parry system, it is a good option to pressure your enemy. It can cast on no more attacks at any point given during the animation and follows well with other actions such as martial skill and blade flash. Not only can the spark can deal additional damage, but each combat style gives a different variation of counter spark. Mew style for example deals more key damage against guarding enemy, while some combat style can be used two times to follow a counter spark, such as chaining with another counter spark, or have an additional attack to deal damage. So whenever we get a new combat styles, make sure to look at what the counter spark does first in the description. There are many other combat styles that trigger different results, bringing a good variety of options in combat. There will be a time where we prefer taking mission number 0, but having allies can be highly useful in this game. Sometimes they will have a unique combat styles to try it out and see if it's to our liking. Besides that, they can be a great way to manage our key. If feeling pressured, we can switch to our allies to make use of their key to react less aggression. Managing our key can be difficult, especially in early playthrough, so I will create switching up to your allies whenever it's needed. After all, they become quite professional at dodging every enemy attacks when controlled by AIs. Switching character is also a great way to synergize martial skills with your allies to create a team attack. Whenever you perform a successful counter spark, have the current character stagger the enemy with an attack. Then switch with your allies to follow up their attack. The synergy can be tremendous with the team, while dealing massive damage if done right. It is important to know that each weapon type behaves differently. Some can be quicker to use while others deal more damage. There are three categories that classify those weapons. Lightweight weapons allow flexible positioning with double evasion. They have some mobility with their moveset and attack faster than other weapons. Middleweight weapons end with the roll after their first evasion. And it is balanced between lightweight and heavyweight weapons in terms of power and speed. Heavyweight weapons will always roll on every evasion and deal the most damage possible with martial skill compared to other weapon types. The reason why we need to examine how each weapon type works is to explore their traits. Lightweight weapon may be fast to use, but they deal the least damage among other weapon types. And the heavyweight weapons have power, but sacrifices their speed to make up for it. The key part is to take advantage of their strong point while covering their weaknesses, which is where switching weapons comes into play. If we need to move around quickly during a fight, lighter weapons will be a better choice to create distance between you and the enemy than a heavy weapon. Or when the enemy is vulnerable, heavy weapons will fulfill its purpose, dealing the most damage possible. Equipping at least light or middleweight weapons on primary slot will be recommended for mobility and speed. As for secondary weapons, Heavyweight weapons will be the best choice, or use a weapon stats that can focus on dealing damage. All things considered, there is a skill called flash attack that allows switching weapons during an attack, while triggering a transition attack into another weapon. It may sound good on paper, especially with some perks involved, but it actually removes the flexibility of weapon switch, that can open up too many combo potential and synergy. 
So I recommend avoiding flash attack if you want to make use of this trick. And uh, finally, Blade Flash is one of the core mechanics to manage our stamina in Rise of the Run. One of the main purpose with this mechanic is to recover some keyback after filling the blood cage under the weapon slot. There are a couple of ways to fill the cage. Deal damage with no more attack, counter spark, martial skill, and a critical hit. The amount of blood cage gain depends on the weapon types. When it's full, we can perform blade flash to gain key. As we can see from the animation, there will be a flash on the weapons after a slight delay, which means the blood cage is now of use to gain some key. I recommend loading some perk to recover more key from blade flash, like key recovery and blood gauge. These two can be found in the charm skill tree that will prove useful for key management. If playing with two weapons at once, each weapon has their own separate blood gauge to fill. Fortunately, each weapon can save the amount in the blood gauge, even if uh, changing weapons and use it when the time is right. Even if the blood gauge is not full, it is still possible to trigger it to recover a little amount of key. So feel free to blade flash whenever possible. Just be aware that we do not gain blood gauge when the enemy is blocking our attack. Now this is where things are getting interesting, because Blade Flash involves a lot of cancels. After every attack, Blade Flash can be used to cancel any attack animation recovery, such as No More Attack, Jump Attack, Counter Spark, and the Martial Skill. We can even use it while parrying enemy attack if needed. So it is possible to recover key in the middle of enemy combo. There's more to this mechanic. Counter Spark can completely overwrite the Blade Flash animation. If we combine fast recovery animations of Blade Flash Cancel with Counter Spark, we can parry at a faster rate than normal. Which is great because the enemy can delay their attacks sometimes in order to bait our Counter Spark. And using this trick will help recover quickly from our failed attempts and try to correctly parry again. Besides counter spark, martial skill and weapon switch can also cancel the blade flash animation. If we remember what we learned from weapon switch previously, it was going to allow a smooth transition between two weapons during the fight, creating a synergy that not a single weapon user can create. There's one last trick that makes combat most interesting. When we unlock a skill called Vining Gear, we will have a transition attack that will trigger upon switching combat stars after any attacks. It can be useful to apply pressure against an enemy, but there will be a time when we do want to mix up any attacks without using Vining Gear, and Blade Flash is the only way to cancel that attack. To cancel Vining Gear while attacking, we need to pre-switch it to another combat star, then use Blade Flash at the right time before triggering that transition. The timing can be strict to cancel, since that tree requires you to learn all attack recovery animations to pull this one off. Some attack may have forgiving timings, while others are very quick to use. Once mastered, we can mix any attacks into one smooth combo that elevates the gameplay onto next level. And that will be the end of the starter combo guide. Getting used to those mechanics is only but the beginning. As we progress further in the game, mastering the gameplay will open up to other techniques that will improve our gameplay experience. And today when we will find every other technique is when we will finally experience Rise of the World combat. I am sure that there will be many opportunities to learn to develop the gameplay, and that will be up to the players to discover them. If you have anything to share, Comment down below and let us know what you think. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.